Hello, and welcome to the Kathleen Spracklin Podcast. I am still teaching Zettelkasten, and I am taking a break from the Adler series for a little while because I've got some homework to do, to be totally frank. But I'm in the meantime, I'm going to answer some questions that have come in that are of a more basic level and get those answered while I'm busy reading Simon Sinek analytically. Okay. So the first question that I'm dealing with is, what do you do with a card when it comes into your system and you know in your heart of hearts that this card is going to have another card that's more general that will come in later? I mean, we're down at a detail level and you just are really quite confident that something at a higher level is going to come in. Do you try to leave a space for it? What do you do? How do you... How do you handle that? Well, I'll show you in the down facing camera, but the simple thing is you don't worry about it at all. Each card has only one job. Its job is to pick its parent from the existing system as best it possibly can and only, only, only break into a new topic if there's just nothing that makes any sense as a parent. So let's take a look at a specific example that exactly fits the question that, that is being asked, but then I also have another one that's similar that I'm going to share with you as well because it's also instructive. So come on over to the down facing camera and let's get going. Okay, here's a sample card that does a good job of illustrating exactly um, what the viewer wanted to know. And I'm sorry, I, I didn't keep track of your name and I sh I'm, every time I say my viewer or what, I, I'm feeling bad that I can't say who it was that asked the question. I apologize. Okay, the question is, this card, does redness exist because it's one of Plato's universals? Okay, that's my tagline. The, the specific information is that Plato held that universals exist as objective reality. And the quote from Peter Kreef's philosophy on page 59 is that even if all red things in the universe cease to exist, redness would still exist. Uh, my response to that is, is that only true because red things once really existed. And then I made the note that, but in physics, it's a wavelength of light, so well, yes, it is real. But in my world, I didn't have anything about Plato because anything I learned about Plato, I learned before I kept a Zettelkast. And so it was pretty slim pickings for where to place this card. So I was kind of facing the question that my viewer wanted to know, well, am I gonna make a Plato space card? Well, here's the parent that this card chose. And this is an older card, which you can tell because it's three by five and it doesn't fit my normal scheme. That's from Serta Lunges. And he says, always be looking for how we can reconcile seemingly disparate points of view. Look for the universal truths that unite them. And because this is a universals and a universal, that's about as close as I could come. And so this is what I mean by it's much better to place this card here where it's creating a conversation than to start some kind of a new topic. And there's enough of a tie in here between the two universals. They're both about philosophy. And when we think about it, really, we can get going pretty well with some thought patterns in terms of this idea of, well, then what what truths do unite uh, Plato and Sertolanges, for example? So I decided that that would go quite well there, and so I appropriately gave it the number based on this card. All right, so now I wanted to show an example of what the reader was worried about. What happens then when a new card comes in that is that more general card? Well, I didn't happen to have one, but Google is so helpful in that regard. So I had no trouble constructing one. And this came out of a Google search, which delivered up a bar, a blog, Farnham Street blog. The information I got from that blog was that Plato believed that philosophy is a tool that can help us change the world. And um, my my rumination on that was, I wonder what he envisioned as the lever. And then my tagline is Plato, study philosophy, change the world. Okay, so this doesn't have a card number yet. So where where am I going to place this in my system? It feels as though this card should be the parent to this card because this is about Plato 
And this is about Plato, and this is more general about Plato than this is. So I think what we're going to do is once this card gets into our system, it's going to be an alternate parent to this card quite validly. Okay, so now we, we've got this card, and it wants to be this card's parent, but that doesn't help us give this card a number. This card needs its own parent. So what is the parent going to be for this card? I found another old card in my system. This one came from the Learning Transfer, the Language Transfer Project. And the quote is, when it comes to language learning, how well we speak another language often has to do with how willing we are to submit to the ways in which it interprets the world. In much the same way that answering a question often implies submitting to the premises of it. So if we're talking about how we interpret the world, that was as close as I could come to changing the world. So I'm going to make this card the parent for the new Plato card. There, there's, and we can really think about it. This again is an older card that doesn't have a tagline, but it is in the index and has something close to a tagline with these underlying words. When I pull this out, I'll be able to see what its tagline is from the index and I'll supply it at the top of the card. So I've got this card is going to have its number. Okay, my new card has its number. This card did not have any other child cards. So this number was free and available. So now the next thing that I need to do is make this card an alternate parent to the card on Plato's Universals. Okay, here's my existing, my new conversation that I've created. My new card, uh, Study Philosophy and You Can Change the World, starts a conversation with uh, how the way we interpret the world, um, it, language helps us with the way we interpret the world. So, of course, philosophy seems like, because it is expressed in language, also helps us in interpreting the world. So that's kind of an interesting conversation. And then this card also relates to that card that we put into the system at a time when we didn't have very much about Plato. And so this studying philosophy can change the world ties into does redness exist because it's one of Plato's universals. The tie-in again is a little bit on the weak side. Um, it's just Plato and Plato. But as we learn more about Plato, and this conversation card starts to fill out, this, this will have a better place. But right now we want to remember that this card could have been the parent for this card. There's another card that I want to show you that came up in my system. Okay, now this is a card that we just saw a few days ago with the Adler work, and it was time to file this card. And it was where I had noted that inspectional reading goes from the outside in, looking at the table of contents and the structure, and finally getting down to a few terms, whereas analytical reading goes from the inside out, from the terms to the, to the points or the pro propositions to the arguments that supported the propositions. So you're kind of going out, in, out. And uh, so then the question was, well, where is this card going to get filed? Well, when I went into the, uh, my index to find out where it should be filed, I came upon this older card. How do I know it's an older card? It's a, it's a four by six. Yeah, but do you see a source? Uh, do you see my reflection? All you see is some information that was pulled out of Adler's Four Kinds of Reading. Well, it's definitely directly related. But all this card does is it enumerates Adler's four kinds of reading, elementary reading, inspectional, analytical, syntopical. Well, nice to get a review of the four kinds, but there's, there's not much really there. There's no real thoughts or arguments going on. There's just 
an enumeration of the kinds of reading, and yet this is clearly where my new card belongs. But then where does it belong? Okay, so this card is clearly going to go with this because this card talks about the four kinds of reading, enumerates the four, and here I'm talking about two of the four. But when I pulled this card, I discovered that it already had child cards for each of the four types of reading, A, B, C, D. And now I wanted to add this new card, which is, again, at a more detailed level. It's somewhat like the card that our, my viewer wanted to know about. So where did it go? I made it an E. I gave it the, the next number available. And now compare the tagline. Inspectional reading is outside in, analytical is inside out. So much more to go on than just this topic, 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 topic. So this the kinds of experiences, happening, having this kind of experience again and again is what made me realize that I always want to have the full tagline. Those title topics just go dead. They don't give you any energy. They don't spark anything. They don't invite you into a conversation. This is so much more powerful than either of these. Well, I hope that answered your question. Don't worry at all about detail levels coming in before the, the wider level. They will shape up. The conversations will form just fine. Go ahead and put it in where it goes. Link as closely as you can link, but don't fret over things that are a little bit of a stretch. Sometimes stretching between two things that don't quite fit can be very, very insultful very, very insightful. For example, memory experts sometimes will memorize long lists of completely unrelated words by mentally linking each word to the next and forming a link between two things that have nothing in common. Well, if a memory expert can find it valuable to link two things that have nothing whatsoever in common, you can find value in linking things that have something in common. It's a lot of fun. It inspires your mind and it starts building up your Zettelkasten with thoughts and conversations even when your Zettelkasten is very young and you don't have a lot of cards. So just don't be afraid. Effortless numbering is really that. It's effortless. The structure will show up later. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.